Welcome to the Archer's Choice. We are a team of bow hunters who live for the sport just like you. Are you ready? Because we are, and excited to bring you the most exciting, entertaining, all bow hunting TV show that you've ever seen. You know, the Archer's Choice TV show has put together a team of bow hunters who live, dream, and breathe this great sport just like you. The goals of our show are simple, to bring you with us and share the good times as well as some of the bad. But the bottom line here is to always keep it real. From down home hunting to budget minded adventures, we'll be there together. From calling to crawling, from stand hunting to stalking, we'll do it together. So don't touch that remote control, because here's a sneak preview of what's to come on The Archer's Choice. We know we're very fortunate to be able to travel all over pursuing game with our bows. It seems no matter where we end up, there's a common bond when you meet other bow hunters. Our passions, emotions, thrills, and disappointments are evident in all our expressions as we share a story around the camp. Nothing can give us this adrenaline rush than to be within throwing distance of a wild animal, knowing it could hear your heart beating a million times a minute, and within seconds, it's over. Hunting, as is life, is emotional roller coaster. We experience the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in just one release of the string. And that's what we're all about. All of us are on the ride of our lives, so hang on tight and let's all go for one heck of a ride. Oh man, that main bean is all busted, but what a beautiful deer. To me, there is no difference between being a woman in the outdoors and a man in the outdoors. Obviously, I'm not a man. I can't tell you what a man in the outdoors feels like. But to me, everyone says, you know, oh, you're a woman, you're in the outdoors. Tell me, you know, what's it feel like? It feels like I'm out there hunting or I'm out there walking and hiking, and there's no reason why there should be a division between men and women in the outdoors. Yes, there are a lot more men in the outdoors than there are women in the outdoors. Yeah. And hunting is definitely a man's sport. There's definitely not as many women hunting as there are men. But 
to actually put a difference that a man and a woman in the outdoors, when I'm out there, I'm just one of the other hunters. Antelope hunting to me is you're sitting in a pip line for 13 hours a day. You have the opportunity to catch up on a lot of reading, maybe playing solitaire if you bring some cards with you. And you're waiting there and you're anticipating for that one antelope to hopefully come in and present you a shot. That is, it can take you all day long, which a lot of times, in fact, on my hunt in Colorado, it took us six days, 13 hours a day, sitting in a pit blind, sweating to death. You have wet, we had wet nights where the dew was on the grass so the antelope weren't coming in until late in the afternoon. All of a sudden they do show up, and if you're not ready, you miss your opportunity and you look forward to another 13 hour day in a pit blind. Oh boy, I gotta get Phil. He's gonna be so happy to see that I actually shot something. Oh man, I think I started making him get a little bit of a complex. I wasn't gonna shoot anything. Whew. Well, my shot was 35 yards right across the water. He ran after I, after my shot, he ran up and around here. And he looked like he's gonna run, hopefully, right up this hill and over, so. Let's stay on the blood trail and see what we can find. There's this track, too. Man, look at the coyotes already got to them. We haven't even been gone like an hour. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's definitely one to be proud of. Look at that. Man, I still can't believe how far he went, but maybe that's why. Maybe the coyotes pushed him a little bit. Man, thanks again. You know, it's real easy to associate these things in your mind. Elk, mule deer, white-tailed deer, black bear, moose, caribou, and so on and so on. Now step back, and what if I say Gemsbuck or Oryx, Kudu, black wildebeest, blue wildebeest, and go on and lion, Cape buffalo, red hartebeest, and you're looking at me like, whoa, what are you, nuts? Let me tell you something. There are many opportunities out there besides North America, and Africa is probably one of the ultimate. 
You know, and I'm saying Africa, and you're thinking, oh man, yeah, you know, got need a lot of money. You don't. You know, it's very affordable, especially today. They're starting to realize that there's a lot of hungry bow hunters out there that want to go over there. So the prices have come down. Just experience sitting in a tree, what they call tree blind or tree high. It's about the size of a condo from what we're used to. Going from a ground blind or even stalking. And you're sitting there and you see maybe five or six gemsbuck coming in. And then all of a sudden you see a string of eland and then red hartebeest and then blue wildebeest. You see ostrich, you see all these critters and it's like, oh man, I've died and gone to heaven. This is it, it's, it's, a, it's a bow hunter's dream come true. And it's all affordable and it's waiting for you. So when you have that opportunity, take it. You'll be happy you did. Well, we're at Matiagama. We're sorta of in the flats, Jimmy, and we got the spring buck all hanging up right up in here. That's right. We got the wind in our favor. We're gonna yeah. come up, what are we gonna stay in the thicker cover? Yeah. So we're gonna work our way through this cover and uh, make uh, use of the wind and then we're gonna sneak on on the animals. <sighs> Let's try it. They got good eyesight, huh? Yeah. I mean, I if we had to rate it as far as like an animal, probably same as our antelope, our pronghorn, they live more in a semi-desert area. Yeah. yeah uh, spring is, and it's also hard to see a spring buck. They rely more on their eyesight than anything else. Yeah. Well, let's, let's try it. I see, I could just see him walking through the mountain. You see, there's one coming from the left also. There, why is that road? He's running. It's a two bucks. They're, okay, they're just going to spar. Is this mating season now? Yeah, it can help us. What we can do, if they're distracted and start sparing, maybe that will give us also opportunity in getting close to them. All right. Because then they're distracted and not as aware of what's going on around them. It can help us. We can use that in our favor. What, what do you think we should do? Towards these, and then work. Right. If this doesn't work out, because we'll the wind's still coming across. Yeah, we're gonna turn, yeah. We must first keep on going straight up there, and then we're gonna turn because the wind is coming from this way. He's going down. He's going down. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. As a 45 yard shot. He come through. You saw it. It's taken all day. My heart's coming out of my chest. I got my first spring book and he's down. Let's go check it out. Give me there it is. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that it is. What a beautiful animal. Wow. What a beautiful little animal. Thank you, Jimmy. Unbelievable. What a day, a full day of just stalking these things. You know, we're so used to sitting up in a perch somewhere in a tree stand and being able to see everything. Well, let's talk about being eye to eye, ground level, stalking animals. I don't care if you're talking elk, deer, whatever. You are on the ground. You are on their yard. They know every single stitch of that area. Every advantage is against you. The only thing you've got going is that you are supposed to be the ultimate predator. <laughs> now, we headed up with Wolf Creek Outfitters, Bob Irvin, up in Alberta, Canada, and we were stalking mule deer. When you get up there and you see it, it's almost like, where are they? It's flat terrain. You're on the ground. You're literally crawling through these grasses. You peek up. You're looking around. And then all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, 
Here's this little coulee. Here's this little valley. Never saw it from anywhere else. And here's where those deer lay. We, you know, you, you cover so much ground doing this. And the, the big advantage is covering all that ground, you can come up over these little rises, glass, a lot more glassing than anything else. You know, a lot of times people get caught up in, well, if, you know, if I'm stalking or if I'm still hunting or whatever I'm doing going through this brush, you know, I'm going to cover a lot of ground. Let me tell you, the best thing to do is let your optics and your eyes do more of the hunting than just trying to cover a lot of ground. You know, sit there and glass and try to see what's happening. You do that more on all of your hunting adventures and you're going to be more successful. <laughs> well, you know what they say. No, I don't know what they say. But missing, <laughs> it's part of the game. And that's what we showed you, and that's why we want to show you that, because none of us are perfect. You know, my dad taught me a long time ago that you get kicked off a horse, get right back on, and it's going to make you better. Folks, I'm here to tell you, we all miss. None of us are perfect. No one's a shooting machine, and you don't want to be. You shoot and miss, Put it on a chalkboard because it's going to happen again. The more you experience anything like this, the better we all are. We know there's many shows out there and we personally want to thank you for sharing some time with us. Our team understands what it takes to make it all work. Lord knows none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes and hopefully we can learn from those. God is the ultimate teacher of life and or death. And Mother Nature, she's made us the supreme predator. That's the reason why we should never be ashamed or question why we hunt. We need to stop fighting amongst ourselves, whether it's recurve, longbow, compound, whatever. We're all bow hunters. Learn to stand strong, be proud, and let everyone know your choice is the archer's choice. See you next week.